Now, the European Space Agency is set to work alongside Russia in attempts to colonize the moon. My colleague Kevin Owen discussed the plan with RT's Daniel Hawkins. So, Dan, why do agencies want to work together here? Because, of course, previously, historically, they hadn't wanted to back in those early days of moon exploration, but now it's teamwork's the order of the day, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. Well, back in those days, as we can see uh, here, Kevin, it was all about uh, the space race, the competition between the US and, at the time, the Soviet Union. Of course, the Russians have a wealth of experience uh, in this. Uh, Neil Armstrong was the first man on the moon uh, but the Russians, the Soviets at the time, uh, did launch many probes, satellites and robots. OK, Dan, so give us a bit more detail about what the European Space Agency is planning here in this eventual space base they say they want to put up there. Now, that's the long-term goal, Kevin. At first, the missions will, of course, be unmanned, and they'll really look at if the Moon has enough resources to sustain human life, mm. oxygen, water and fuel. Wow. And this is what they envisage in the very long term, this sort of Star Wars-like base. Uh, it'll be made by a 3D printer. It'll mm. have full protection from solar radiation, of which there is an increased level, of course, on the moon. Mm. Also protection from meteorite showers. That's something they're taking into account to minimise risk. It's a harsh risk. place to live, isn't it? It certainly is, yeah. And this is why uh, not only will it have this living and work area, it has a separate airlock, uh, an airtight area, technical support module, also uh, natural lights uh, at the top, almost like living in a veranda. And the whole area is pressurised and inflatable to minimise any sort of risks to astronauts and cosmonauts. And uh, fascinatingly, this is how the ESA envisage uh, this construction being built. The lunar habitation is built by a robot-operated 3D printer. The robot collects regolith from the moon's surface. Layers of this moon dust are built up over the dome to create the protective shell. This process takes about three Earth months. Well, of course, a lot of people are going to say this is all very well and good, it's very nice, but it's also extremely expensive and there are a lot of problems back on terra firma on Earth that that money could maybe be thrown at. The argument against that is what? Well, previous missions to the moon have already made some really interesting discoveries. In fact, uh, they've discovered lots of things on the moon's surface that have explained stuff not only about the moon, but about us and our history, where we have mm. come from. Um, so it's hoped that these missions will be able to build on that experience and deepen that knowledge. So amongst the, uh, the other benefits being advocated of this mission are, for example, that the Moon is actually the closest body to Earth. It's only, uh, arguably, only four days away uh, by space travel. So a great place for a colony, which is obviously a long-term aim, colonising other bodies, other planets uh, in our solar system. Mm. Uh, natural resources. There's an element called helium-3, not quite the stuff you put in balloons, but an environmentally friendly gas uh, which is estimated that can provide the whole Earth with energy for 5,000 years. Quite an optimistic Potentially. call. Potentially. So there's going to be quite a lot of focus on that, I guess. The resources up there. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. If they can mine that and somehow get it back to Earth, that will be a fantastic uh, achievement. Mm. It's also a perfect place to put a telescope. Of course, a lot of uh, our view of the solar system on Earth is obscured because we reflect uh, the sun's light, or the moon reflects the sun's light. Mm. If we put a telescope up there, that will give us a great insight uh, into solar systems much further away. And finally, of course, there's the low gravity. Uh, it's six times less than what we have here on Earth. So mm. for any potential space missions uh, going further out into our solar system and beyond, this provides an ideal base for launching uh, further space exploration. I guess you're about the only person around that doesn't have TV coverage of the scene. That's all right. I don't mind a bit. Okay, you got the flag up now, and you can see the stars and stripes on the window. Are you getting a TV picture now, Houston? Neil, yes, we are getting a TV picture. You're in our field with you now. That's one small step for man. One giant leap for mankind. 